Hey, part two, we've been doing a study about evil can evil and the Apostle Paul. And we've been looking at a man who, who's looking at fame and fortune as a career. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then we've been looking at a man of the Bible. And we've been looking at a man who's suffering. I mean, broken bones and all that's suffering. As a result of his chosen career of motorcycle stunts. And we've been looking at the Apostle Paul who's been suffering for the Word of God. And I'm not trying to make evil can evil worse than Paul. And but we've also seen the thing with, with evil can evil is he's setting a pattern for the churches. He's gonna do one more car jump better than what he did last month, last year, and or what other stunt motorcycle stunt drivers are doing. And the churches are going to do much more than what the church down the road or or that church is doing. Or what they did last year. And this is part two. And I advise you, please get part one and listen to both. On January 31st, 1977, Keneva was scheduled for a major jump in Chicago, Illinois. The jump was inspired by the film Jaws. Knievel was scheduled to jump a tank full of live sharks. It would be televised live nationally. Do you know you've got men and wrongly women who get up before television lively? And their, their broadcast and their ministry is brought to you nationally? You know, there could be churches today that two or three years ago, the evils of Facebook, the evils of YouTube, and 2020 and 2021, hey, you know, we're worldwide. You won't believe how many people have seen us on Facebook. You know, I read, I read a report from a worldly Christian magazine. In other words, I wouldn't put any stock. But they say a lot of these pastors believe that, you know, their live stream. They think, you know, their congregation is watching their live. They're not. And live stream gives the church congregation one function that a church cannot give. If they don't like the message, they can turn it off and go or do something else. Or find somebody else. However, during the rehearsal, Knievel lost control of a motorcycle and crashed into the cameraman. Although Knievel, Knievel broke his arms, he was distraught over he claimed, he, what was claimed was a permanent eye injury to the cameraman. I'm not going to get the cameraman's name. And the cameraman was admitted to the hospital and received treatment for his eye injury, or near his eye, but received no permanent injury. The footage of the crash was so upsetting, Knievel did not show up, show the clip 19 years until his, his documentary, Absolute Evil, the evil Knievel story. You know, Paul would assume that, uh, many people assume that Paul had an eye injury. We don't know what that injury was. But Acts 28, 3 through 6, when Paul was gathering a bundle of sticks, they laid them on a fire. And there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians the barbarian saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer. And Paul was. Whom they thought had escaped to sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. He shook off the beast into the fire 
and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when they looked how be it they looked when he should have been swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and thought that he was a god. What a change. Murderer. He's a god. You know that happened twice to Paul? He, one time they thought he, he was a god and, and the priest started bringing the garland. They were going to do sacrifice with the people. I would assume some people thought the evil Knievel was, was the next best thing to God. The guy kept coming alive. There had to have been somebody who was saying, and no no wickedness to evil Knievel. He's not going to survive that. And he died. Afterwards, Knievel retired from major performances. I thought he said he was done. And limited appearances to smaller venues to help launch his career of his son, Robbie Knievel. His last stunt show, included, not including the jump, took place in March 1980 in Puerto Rico. However, Knievel would officially finished his career as a Dale Delvo, a touring companion of his son Robbie, limiting his performances to speaking only, rather than stunt writing. Acts 16, 27 to 30. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest. Then King Agrippa said to Paul, thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I accept these bonds. Paul said, I would have you, I would love you, everyone to be here to be a Christian as I am, except for these handcuffs. Mr. Knievel passes his unto his son. If Paul had children and he didn't, he would have wanted to pass one thing on his church, be saved. The amusements and the excitements didn't excite Paul. There was two things that excited Paul. The preaching of the gospel and people getting saved and Christians growing in the Lord. Evil Knievel took great pride in his core values. Throughout his career, later in life, he repeatedly talked about the importance of keeping his word. You mean lying to the dunes? That he was a lawyer and he was a corporation? There are preachers who have lied to me. I won't give you their names. And they'll get up before the pulpit. Oh, I'm preaching the word of God. You lied to me. I'm not talking about, listen, we all, I, I, I tell lies. I'm not perfect from the all true. But I haven't lied enough to where, you know what? It's lie after lie after lie after lie. Kniva would regularly share his anti-drug message. That's a good message. As it would another one of his, vo his core values. Kniva would preach, that's what they say, I don't know, an anti-drug message to children and adults before each of his stunts. That's a good core value. One organization that Kniva regularly slammed for being drug dealers was the Hells Angels. And that's where one time, you know, he didn't want to be referenced the E-V-I-L. That's where he wanted to be the E-V-E-L. But I heard another story. What about Paul, Romans 10.1? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. 
And if Paul had that zeal for the for the Israelites, which are his brethren, what do you think he had for the Gentiles? I mean, he's in jail with Silas one night, and he's singing praises of God. That, that jailer could came in, and what must I do? I just leave me alone. You know, I don't not even be in here. I've got rights. Where's my lawyer? Where's my phone call? And yet he told that man a wonderful message to use today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's much better than anti-drug. Now, anti-drug messages are good. But there's no better message than to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the churches have not got that. What do you mean? Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And what do churches do today? We got movie night. We got fish fry. We've got Easter celebration. We've got this. We got fellowship. We got bowling. We've got. Come to church. They've got other messages. That evil Knievel's got and the worldly people got that they don't have the message of Paul. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Do you know where that was written to? That was written to the carnal church in Corinth. Ta da! I had a guy one time come up to a long time ago at, at our street ministry at the farmer's market. Well, you know, if you had hamburger and hot dogs. You know, churches have hamburgers and hot dogs. And they don't have the gospel. At their fellowships. I was at a church one time. My wife and I got sick of it. We go to church Sunday morning. We go to church Sunday, Sunday school Sunday morning. And then there'll be a fellowship afterwards. There'll be no Sunday evening service because of a fellowship. You know, my wife counted one time. There were more people at that fellowship than there was in Sunday school or Sunday service. You know what the pastor of that church, and we weren't married yet. You know what that pastor of the church did to me and my fiance? Called us into his office and said, we're not, I'm not going to marry you. Why? What's what great sin that you're not going to marry us? You don't come to our fellowships. You can check it out in Stonington, Connecticut. Open Door Baptist Church. Between Sally Hayward and her name then was Lisa Versaw. Okay? Don't you tell me. I've been in churches where they, they were just before the service, they were selling tickets to a beer party, beer cake party afterwards. Don't you tell me. Now the church where I where I where I grew up was, I don't know what denomination, I know, you know. They were being sued because they had a party at the church, or whatever they call it then. And one of, the, one of the teens left that, that, that church and got involved with a DUI accident. Now, the teen that left the church caused the DUI. And guess where the, the, the drinking came from? Okay. Knievel was a proponent of motorcycle helmet safety. He constantly encouraged his fans to wear motorcycle helmets. The Bell Star helmet he used in his Caesar Palace jump is created for is created or credited for having saved Knievel's life. After he fell off the motorcycle and struck his head on the ground, ouch. Following the Caesar Palace crash, each of Knievel's full face helmets bore the slogan, Color Me Lucky. Can you see Paul saying, lucky? 
Can you not see, Paul? I give credit and honor to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Can you see that nothing my Father in heaven and my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you see nothing, Paul, saying by the grace and mercy of God the Father? As an ardent supportive helmet use, Knievel once offered a cash reward for anyone who witnessed him stunting on a motorcycle without a helmet. In 1987, Knievel supported a mandate helmet bill in the state of California. Excuse me. All right, now what does Paul have to say? 1 Corinthians 4.16 Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. 1 Corinthians 11.1 1. Carnal church, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be ye followers together with me, and mark them which mark them which walk so as ye have us for example. You can't follow that example of the church today. Paul wouldn't even recognize the churches today. The, the church today is described in the book of Revelation chapter 3. Jesus Christ is standing outside. And you guys want to come in? Hello? While Kenema was healing from his injuries sustained in Chicago Jump, the book Evil Knievel on tour was released. Written by Knievel's promoter for Snake River Canyon Jump, Shelley Saltman. The book painted an unflattering picture of Knievel's character, alleging that he abused his wife and children and used drugs. Knievel, with both arms still in the cast, flew to California to confront Saltman, by then a VP at the 20th Century Fox. Outside the studio commission, one of Knievel's friends grabbed Saltman and held him, while Knievel attacked him with an aluminum bat. I don't know how he could do that with arms and cast. And declaring, I'm going to kill you. According to the witness to the attack, Knievel struck repeatedly blows to Saltman's head with Saltman blocking the blows with his left arm. Saltman's arms and wrists were, were shattered several places before he fell to the ground unconscious. It took numerous sur surgeries and permanent mental plates in his arm for Saltman to regain the use of his arms. Saltman's book was withdrawn from the publisher after Knievel threatened to sue. Saltman later produced documents in criminal, in criminal and civil court that proved that Knievel claimed to have been insulted by the statements of Saltman's book. He and his lawyers actually been given editorial access to the book and approval to sign off every word prior to the publication. On October 14, 1977, Knievel pleaded guilty to battery and was sentenced to three years probation and six months in the county jail. After the assault, Saltman at the time served in jail. Knievel lost his marketing endorsements and deals, including Harry Davidson and Ideal Toys. He continued living as he was one of his world's wealthiest celebrities. With no income from jumping or sponsors, Knievel evidently declared bankruptcy. In 1981, Saltman was awarded 13 million judgment against Knievel in his civil trial, but he, received, but he never received any money from either Knievel or his estate. Acts 23, 1 through 5. Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God unto this day. A high priest, Ananias, commanded them to stood by him to smite him upon the mount. Then Paul said unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whitest wall, for thou sittest to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to law. They that stood by said, Revows to God's high priest. And Paul said, I wish not, brethren, that he were the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Oh, we got a Democrat president. Oh, the world is doomed. 
The Democratic president has raised the gasoline prices. The world is going to be due because of socialism and the Democratic president. And we didn't get our Trump in Washington, D.C. Oh, how evil, how you are speaking evil and against the contrary of the scriptures. And there are men that be behind Baptist pulpit that are going against the, the scriptures and speaking evil of rulers. And on my Facebook, when I see it, I unfriend them now on. We believe the King James Bible. And then you violate the King James Bible. I know, you don't like what my preaching. Perfectly fine. Stand in line. Take a number. Number seven. <laughs> Kniebel was married twice. He and his wife Linda were married for 38 years. During their marriage, the couple had four children. Two boys, Kelly and Robbie, and two girls, Tracy and Alicia. And... They divorced in 1997. In 1999, Knievel married his girlfriend, Crystal Kennedy of Clearwater, Florida. We began date in 1992. Before the divorce. The wedding was held in 1999. It was held at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas Strip, where he had done that, that jump in 1967. And they divorced in 2001. So, 2005, he was diagnosed with idiopathic polynomial fibrosis, an incurable terminal lung disease that required him to be supplemental oxygen 24 hours a day. I thank God just came home twice in the hospital this year. No oxygen needed. I thank God. At one time, they, I, I could have came home on auction. I had a couple times, I could not have come home on auction. I may not have come home at all. I thank God. In 2006, he had internal morphine pain pump surgery being planned to help him with extracting pain in his deterring lower back. One of the costs of incurring so many traumas over the course of his career as a daredevil. Now, let me tell you, church, you keep injuring yourself. One day, in the life of, of, of Evil Knievel, 2006, and some of these things were even before I was born in 68 and 69 and 70, 2006, that morphine pump may have to be implanted into your body. From all the trauma. Mr. Knievel and churches, let me give you a Bible verse. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. I think a lot of Christians are going to be at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. They think they're going to get rewards and they're going to end up with wood, hay, and stubble. From what I see with the churches today, I think there are many people who, who, who believe when they're going to die, they're going to end up in heaven. And rather than that, they're going to end up in hell. Called easy believism. Just say this prayer. No preaching the gospel. Everything but the gospel so we can get the fanfare. So we can get the thrill. We can get the tickets. How many people do you think supported Mr. Knievel in 2006 of all the years they, they, they saw his thrills? He had two strokes after 2005. Second Corinthians 11, 22 and 31. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes 
above measure, being whipped. Cat of nine tails. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, off. Mr. Knievel had many deaths. So did Paul. Mr. Knievel ended up in prison. Paul, many prisons. I would assume that Mr. Knievel's body had bruises, had scars, and had marks. So did Paul. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. 40 times five is 200, 199 stripes from the cat of nine tails. Thrice, three times, I was beaten with rods. A public punishment. Once I was stoned. Thrice, three times, I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day, I would have been in the deep. Probably the Mediterranean Sea. In journeys off. I was here, there, and everywhere. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen, the Jews. In perils of the heathen, Gentiles. In perils of the cities, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, as such is the body of evil can evil, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, fastings. Now, fasting is not hunger, and hunger is not fasting. There were times in Paul's life, there is no food. And there were times in Paul's life, there's food. I'm fasting. I don't want it. In cold, in nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the churches. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? I burn not. Paul didn't get offended. I must needs glory. I will glory of the things which concern my infirmity. The God of my, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed and ever, knoweth that I lie not. Now we we saw the lies of evil and evil. We see Paul give God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ the glory. Even could even say, "Color me lucky." Was that was that what it was? Color me lucky with all the pain, sufferings, and aggravation that uh, evil could evil went through. Color me lucky. Paul, with all the aggravation that he's done, and Paul did it because he was a Christian. Paul did it for the word of God. Paul did it because the Jews hate him because he represented Jesus Christ, the God the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ is blessed forevermore. On April 1st, now hear me out. Hear me out. Okay? Knievel appeared on the Robert H. Schuler's television program, Hour of Prayer, and announced that I that he believed in Jesus Christ for the first time. At his request, he was baptized at a televised congregation at the Crystal, Cong Con the Crystal Cathedral by Pastor Schuler, Robert Schuler. <coughs> Kind of squeaky there. Knievel's televised testimony triggered mass baptism at the Crystal Cathedral. I don't think Paul would have done tele. There was no televised. All right. I don't know if he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to say. I don't know. But evil Knievel had to make it a televised great show to re represent all his life that had been a great event and show. Is that not the churches today? We gotta have a great show. Now, let me quote the sources. 
Evil Knievel baptized at the Crystal Cathedral, Reverend Schuler, at Myers Daredevil's posit Positively Thinking, ABC7, KABC TV, Associated Press, April 20th, 2007. Original on October 18, 2007. Retrieve October 4th, 2007. And Greenbird Brad A., April 13, 2007. Evil Overcome with Good, Daredevil's Testimony, Triggers Mass Baptism at Crystal Cathedral, Christianity Today. <laughs> Those two words don't go together. Christianity Today. Unless you write that in the in the pages of Revelation chapter 3 under Laodicean. ISSN 00095753 OCLC 1554505 Retrieved June 20th, 2007. Okay. Ready? Drum roll, please. Christ Cathedral, formerly, inf formerly and informally known as the Crystal Cathedral, so a church by another name, is an American church building <laughs> of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Orange, located in Garden Grove, California. Schuler and Roman Catholic Diocese Building, California. I don't know. I mean, this jump might have been a miss also. Just saying, just saying. The reflective glass building by the firm of Philip Johnson, John Berge Architect, seats 2,248 people. They're bragging about the building. Does that sound familiar? The church was tooted as the largest glass building in the world when it was completed in 1981. The building has one of the largest musical instruments in the world, the Hazel Rock Memorial Organ. All about the building, all about the building. Lattice in church age. Until 2013, the building was the principal place to worship the Crystal Cathedral Ministries, now Shepherd's Grove, a congregation of Reformed Church in America. Re founded in 1955 by Robert H. Schuler. An earthquake, I feel. Uh, Crystal Ca Cathedral Ministries filed for bankruptcy in October 2010 and in February 2012 sold the building and adjacent campus to the Roman Catholic Diocese of Orange for the use of the diocese's new cathedral. The building, especially for the interior, has been redone by Johnson Fain to accommodate the Roman Catholic liturgy. Okay. Paul's conversion can be dated to about 31 to 36 AD by his re reference to one of his letters in Galatians 1.16. Paul writes that God was pleased to reveal to his son in me. In 1 Corinthians 15, 8, as he lists the order in which Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, Paul writes, last of all, as one the untimely birth, he appeared to me also. According to the account in the book of Acts, it took place on the road to Damascus, where he reported to have experienced the vision of the ascended Jesus. I don't know about the ascended Jesus. He saw Jesus. The account says that he fell to the ground and heard a voice from him saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? That's Acts 9, 4 through 5. Paul met Jesus Christ. Now, in the words of, of Evil Knievel, that he believed in Jesus Christ. Uh, they said that Evil Knievel died in Clearwater, Florida, on November 30th, 2007, age 69. 
The date of Paul's death is to believe to have occurred at the Great Fire of Rome in July 64, but before the last year of Nero's reign in 68. Paul was decapitated. He was beheaded. Now let's... Evil Knievel said he met or he believed on Jesus Christ. So both men are dead. Now let's say both men are absent from the body and present with the Lord. Who do you think has got more honor and who do you think has heard from the Lord Jesus Christ himself? Well done. The man with the broken bones, scars, and, 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 and morphine pump and for his motorcycle jumps and failures? Or the man that was beaten and, and, and broken bones and, and scarred and, and, and lacerated and for the word of God? Now, if the stated fact in evil can evil, he had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. He's just as saved as Paul is. Who do you think would receive the gold, silver, and precious stone? Now, there's a possibility when I get the glory, I may see, and let me go, was this Robert, was it? Robert. Craig could kneel. I might, uh, might see it in heaven. I'm not saying I'm not going to. And I'm going to see, definitely going to see Paul in that. Now, I have not been given much information on Mr. Knievel's life in Jesus Christ. I didn't say what year. 2007. Okay. I couldn't find any information on his walk in Christ after his belief in Jesus. But we're told about Paul. You know, there are Christians in the Laodicean church. They're going to heaven. And they have marks and they have scars and they have bruises. But they're not going to get gold, silver, and precious stone because it was for the worldly means. It was for the means of thrill and adventure and money and tickets and television. Look at me. Look at us. And there's the, the, the humble Paul who tried to live right, tried to do right. And man, his own Jewish brethren hated him. The own Gentiles hate him. The own church Christians hated him. But he did right. He lived right. And he pleased the Lord. He'll get gold, silver, precious stone. We've got the story here of two men. And we have a conclusion that both men, one man, hey, he said he believed on Jesus. If that is true, both men are in heaven. This is the... Robert, would you break your arm? Oh, yeah. I tried to jump motorcycles and buses. What? What's that? What honor and glory did, did Jesus get out of that? Well, I, I did it for people to watch me and, and get... To... What about your arm, Paul? How'd you break your arm? Well, I went in this city and I, I preached the gospel. I tried to live right and they stoned me to death. Mr. Kadeva, why did you go to jail? Well, a guy wrote a book against me. What about you, Paul? What did you want to? For the word of God, the book of God. The Bible. You mean to tell me you got all upset because people said things about you? 
Well, yeah. You know what Paul wrote? Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Two men. Evil Knievel says, I believed in Jesus Christ. Listen, belief in Jesus Christ is plain. Many would think, oh, you're, you're going to say, you know, evil Knievel's not in heaven. Hey, he believed in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, I've got, I've got lack of information on what Mr. Knievel did after he believed on Jesus Christ. Now, do you realize that moment on April 1st, everything that happened before April 1st, when he believed on Jesus, everything was put under the blood of Jesus Christ. That moment before Paul met Jesus Christ in the road to Matt, all that before, all the murdering, all the sins have been put under the blood of Jesus Christ and both men. Both men lived, be not deceived, God is not mocked, what sober man sowed, that he shall also reap. Mr. Knievel suffered terribly for all his injuries. I guarantee he suffered terribly. Paul suffered. You know, when that snake bit him on the arm, you know what they said? Oh, he's got to be a murderer. You know what Paul was? Paul was a murderer. You know, Paul was whipped, and I read you that. He was whipped, and he was beaten with rods. You ever got to wonder how many Christians were beaten? How many Christians were, were hit with rods at the mouth, or if not at the hands of Paul himself? Do you know what he was going to Damascus for? Do you know he stood at the feet of the death, and Paul said, do it, of Stephen? I'll give you one credit. Like I said, if he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll give you one credit. Actually, I'll give you two credits for Mr. Knievel. One, he went into the military. Thank you for all your service to the, to the armed services of our country. Number two, he didn't quit. He didn't commit suicide. He died Not self-inflicted, can I say that? Paul was beheaded. I could think of some other worldly fashion entertainment. They're out there, and, you know, they took their life with drugs and all that. Their Galatians 6, 7 came in, oh, I ain't going to do it. And they took their life. I'll give you credit for evil can evil. He didn't take his life. He died... Oh, my. oh, yeah, I never did. Knievel died in Clearwater, Florida, November 30th, 2007, age 69. He had years, had he, longtime friend reported Knievel had trouble breathing while at the residence of Clearwater, but died on the way to the hospital. The friend said, it's quote, quote, it's been coming up for years, but you just don't expect it. Superman just doesn't. He just doesn't die, right? Mr. Knievel was not Superman. And it, according to the statement, he died in an ambulance with trouble breathing from all his ailments. Mr. Knievel's death wasn't self-inflicted. Paul died being beheaded they say around 68 AD, 60, 68 AD in that area. And there's all different kind of dates. Both had said to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Both had body injuries and ailments. 
One was for the thrill of fame and fortune. And one is for the word of God in Jesus Christ. One pitches a cardinal worldly church. And the other pitches a church is trying to do right and do right and remain faithful 